With Phil, there is always going to be a constant cycle when it comes to AAA releases. If he gets a lot of money from it, then it means that the game is going to be really good. If it doesn't get a lot of support, then the game sucks while providing no real reasons to why the game is terrible. But yet he'll feign interest and just pretend that he's enjoying himself when it comes to the game. But when you go watch his actual playthrough of it, you can just tell that everything that he says is a bunch of lies. And in this particular case, it's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the game that he was highly anticipating to believe in that it's going to save his channel and it was going to be one of the best games that he played of 2024. And yet, every single time, he's constantly come up with excuses to why he's not getting support. In this case, he's not only going to blame the game, but he's going to blame the fact that he can't say certain things, otherwise the cancel culture will intervene. And after that, we did a whole bunch of quests based on it. We basically did all these different various quests in the Calm uh, City region. And by the end of the stream, we did the entire Grasslands. The Grasslands is the entire first portion of the game. We basically 100%ed it. So we're good. We're done now. And now when we play again, we're ready to move on to the next region. Oh, great. Welcome back to the book report with fucking Dark Side Phil. Where he's going to tell you what he did in the game. And yet nobody cares. They want to actually see him play the game. But he's just going to tell you this boring book report. Now, what's funny about it is, back in the day, when I used to play video games, I didn't used to play them like this. Okay? No, you would always rush through the game and try to pick up the next hot new title. Otherwise, you would miss out and complain that you're not making money. I'd be, buy a new game. I'd pop it in, just before it was digital. I'd pop the disc in. I would play it for like five, six, seven hours that first premiere day. And I would just push the game as far as I could and rush through it. I would not take my time to explore areas. I would not do meaningful side content. I would skip a lot of it. Keep in mind, he always says that side content is meaningful, but in certain cases, if the game's content is not good enough, then it's not meaningful, then that's just bloat. But he likes to play the fence when it comes to side content, whether it's being meaningful or it's bloat. He always wants to say that he always rushed through the games because he has to go play the hot new release. It was always because he would try to record as fast as he possibly could, upload the raw files up to YouTube, not even bothering to edit or just compile it into one or two or four videos. Instead, mass upload. That way he can milk it for profits. There were some exceptions. Like if I was playing Fallout or something, I would. But for most of these games, I was always kind of in a rush. And the reason being is because back in the day, <clears throat> I was known as the guy who would get that game on release day, pump it in, play it as fast as I can, and beat it within a few days, and be on to the next game. Yeah, and this is the one thing when it comes to Let's Plays that nobody really fucking liked. And that's what Phil was trying to do. Trying to be that one guy to upload as much videos as he possibly could so he can make a quick buck off of it and then move on to the next release. Every fucking time. So if you wanted to see a playthrough right away of a hot new game, watch DSP Gaming. Nah, I'd rather go watch someone else. There were many other people besides DSP that was out there making the same kind of content. But at least with them, though, they made it more entertaining. Now, over the years, when basically that wasn't possible anymore because people were getting games earlier, right? People found ways to get the game four days early or a week early and stream it. That advantage didn't matter anymore. Well, Phil, the reason why most of these people would get the copies early is because they know how to pull strings. They know how to be entertaining enough so that someone can actually notice them. And then, hey, here's a reward for them for actually being entertained. Here's a reward for them for the, all their good work that they've done. It's essentially that. But you don't like that because, oh my god, they're stealing my views. Okay? And so, people told me, hey... You have to change. We don't like the quality of your playthroughs anymore because you rush through games too much and you lose you out on so much content that is meaningful to the game that you don't even get the full picture of what the game is. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. He's trying to make up excuses to why he had to change his content even though he never changed. And you know he's going to make up a lie because he kept bouncing his leg up and down. So we want you to change. So I did. I then became, well, I'm going to focus in on the games that I like more and play less of the games. You know, I'm not going to play five, six games in a, in a you know, two-week span. I'm going to play maybe two, three games in a two-week span. And yet, every single time we see you play these games within that time frame, it's still going to be relatively boring. Because you want to pretend that you're a 100% completionist going through every single game, doing all the side content, doing the main story, and then thinking 
just maybe that it's going to make you look like a presentable streamer, a good let's player, when in reality, it doesn't really do that, Phil. Instead, it just shows how boring you really are. But I'm going to focus more in on what I'm doing. And so I started taking my time, exploring open worlds, doing all the content and all. And yet all that time, it's still boring. All of that, right? People liked it. People, oh, this is much better. Now your playthroughs are more, more interesting. And Who's telling you this, Phil? Name someone in your chat that's telling you that this was good. No one would, because apparently these are all imaginary people in your head. I had people along for the ride with me. But now, it's funny, because here I am playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And as I'm doing the open world content, which is fun and has its own plots and meaningful stuff going on, I'm getting upgrades, material, all this stuff. People are just sitting here complaining. Oh my god, why is he doing this? Does he not know that this content is boring and grindy? And, and I'm like, wait a minute. Show us actual receipts of people actually telling you that the game is boring. Pull them up. But no, you don't want to do that because, oh, I want to keep it anonymous so that no one can be harassed. Even though what you're essentially doing right here is just making up people harassing you. And yet, again, there's no receipts of this. If you want a game that doesn't have that content in it, there's a game like that. You want to know what it's called? Final Fantasy VII, the original. It doesn't have this open world questing or any of it. It's literally leave Midgar, right? Go to Calm, get a flashback scene. Go to the swamp. Oops, there's a, there's a, a snake there that's going to kill you. Go to the Chocobo Ranch, grab a Chocobo. Walk over the swamp, and you're in the next part of the game. And that takes, what, like an hour? In Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the open world's like six plus hours of awesome, fun content for RPG lovers right? Uh-huh. An RPG lover like yourself, even though you kept complaining over and over and over, there are too many RPGs release and you can't play them all and that people don't like it when you play RPGs that y'all are burnt out when in reality you're burnt out for someone pretending to be a fan of RPGs. But I love how you're trying to compare the original to the remake of it. Do you not understand that that is a really bad analogy when it comes to this or a bad comparison really? So the question is, what are you looking for? Like, I think that the game developers did exactly what they should have done. They've adding in all this supplemental content that makes this game feel like what you wish a game was originally. So, a retelling by adding on additional content, making it more of a reboot. Uh-huh. Don't you wish that in the 90s, when you were playing these classic RPGs, that you could have all this extra fun content and stuff? But then again, though, Phil, you fail to realize that back in the 90s, when Final Fantasy VII first came out, there was technical limitations to why they can only put in certain amounts of content into it, and the rest of it, they can't put into it. Do you not understand there's a whole thing when it comes to graphical limitations? How much space can be held on a CD? Nowadays, most CDs out there can hold a lot more memory when it comes to that. Or there's the digital age, which has a lot more memory that you can download. And also the technology used to make these games has advanced. Now they look better. The more modernized feel of it. And also the combat's different. Everything about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or just the remake trilogy all in all is going to be entirely different than the original. It's just crazy to me that... Now you're getting that content, and people are like, wow, well, this is boring. Because you make it boring, Phil. And by God, the way that I have this pause, yeah, this is... Imagine you're playing a video game, and this is the face that you see every single time. You don't want to tune in now, do you? <laughs> really? It's boring that you're finally getting this content people have always wanted. You know, I'm riding around on five different chocobos. All my party members are present on the screen, which is amazing, because most RPGs never do that. Uh-huh, there are some games that actually show all the party members on their film, but again, it's also the developer's choice to have them on there, or just have a select few people on the screen. I mean, for God's sake, there are some RPGs that actually did that film, you know, Kuni did it, and yet you're gonna say, oh, now they showed it all, now it's impressive, this is impressive, well, whoop de fucking do who cares? You know, the graphics are great. Are they fuzzy? Yes. I'm not gonna lie. The graphics are fuzzy. Huh, a lot different from the original take that he had where he said the graphics were spectacular. But, they're 60 frames. The game looks stunning in combat and stuff. Albeit a little bit too many effects, it's hard to see what happens in certain fights. But, it's still amazing looking, right? And well, then again, though, Phil, it heavily depends on who you ask. There are some people out there that probably won't like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, not because, oh, it's Final Fantasy VII, but maybe it's because it's not their type of game. Do you not understand that some people can have a preference to what game they can enjoy? 
There's enough content of all different kinds to keep you occupied and interested. Around every corner, there's something new to discover, something interesting in this open world. So, that's it's just crazy to me. Oh, this content's boring. Phil should skip it. That's what people are saying. Phil should skip all the content of Final Fantasy VII and just do the story. Well, Phil, most people that are playing the video game outright, they're mostly going to skip the side content because they want to go through the main story first. A lot of people tend to do that, Phil. But again, you're trying to pretend you're this 100% completionist, trying to explore every nook and cranny when it comes to a video game. But we've seen the past experiences when you had with video games where you just rush, 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 try to make a quick profit out of it. But yet all of a sudden you're complaining that people don't find this content enjoyable just because of the way that you do things. It's all on you, not the way the game is presented. I swear to God, we go full circle. Just like back in the day, I used to do mature rated content, sexualized co commentary, racial commentary. Right? Phil, you're going to say that this was mature commentary when this was immature commentary. That this was just bottom of the barrel jokes that you thought was comedy. It wasn't funny. It was very cringe. You tried doing that for shock value and it just made you look like a depraved loser. Right, racial jokes, th things like that. And everyone complained, wow, you're such an immature asshole, right? You're such an idiot. This is why you don't deserve success because you're just a jerk. So over the years, I mature, I change. I, I, I become a different person. Yeah, you became a totally different person. You don't make the racist jokes anymore. You don't make the sexualized jokes anymore. Instead, you result yourself into scat humor. Talking about eating your own ass with a spoon. Talking about how, oh yeah, fart jokes, ack, 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 ack. And you think that this is enjoyable. You think that having all of this in the background makes you more mature than it makes you change. When in reality, it doesn't make you mature. It doesn't make you look like you change. Instead, Instead, it just makes you look lazy, but you're trying to cover your ass with something just because that you already have a history of doing really fucked up shit. Now, I don't want to do that commentary anymore, and now people say, wow, your commentary sucks, it's boring now. Phil, your commentary already sucked. Even back in the day, it was fucking cringe and terrible. You don't do all that fun, risque commentary you used to do. Who said that this was fun and risque? Maybe shock value, sure. Risque, eh. Depends on who you ask, but fun, pressing X to doubt. You have to understand something, okay? And I, I mean this now, I hope people will listen. You can only demand change for so long, but then when you get it, you can't go back on it because things have already changed, it's too late, right? Phil, there is a thing of reevaluating yourself to figure out what's wrong with you and why people don't like you anymore. But the problem with it, though, is now you're calling it demands. That they're demanding you to reevaluate yourself when in reality you could do this all on your own, but you just refuse to do so because it's you're going to try to put the blame onto someone else. That it's the detractor's fault. That it's someone like Evil AJ or Tevin's fault. That it's side scrollers' fault. That it's YouTube's fault. That it's all these factors that the reason why you're not successful and the reason why that you're boring when in reality it's all based around you like here's the thing 10 15 years ago i was a completely different dude i was single i was an alcoholic uh phil you were with liana did you completely skip the pet like fact that you were dating liana 10 years ago 15 years ago different story but 10 years ago you were still with liana and you were still making all these jokes and here's one thing that i've noticed with liana he would constantly fart Belt, snort right in front of her. But with Cat, doesn't do that anymore because he's trying to make himself fake. At least with Leanna, he was more real with her than with Cat that looks comes across as fake. I know that's like a little side change with this and has no relevancy to this, but I figured I'd point that out just a tiny, tiny bit. Also, I would like to add that I completely skipped over the fact that he mentioned he was an alcoholic, but the only reason why I skipped over that is because he keeps saying that over and over and over how he was a former alcoholic and he doesn't drink alcohol anymore. But we all know the truth. He's still continuously drinking alcohol while deluding himself into believing that he was a former alcoholic, that he's changed, but in reality, he's never changed, and he's still glugging down the bottles of gin. I didn't take YouTube seriously. I was fucking around every video that I made. So I rushed through a game just to get views or make money.
uh-huh so you were just doing it to fuck around that you didn't care about anymore but as soon as you were partnered with machinima and someone said something about you they were damaging your reputation trying to ruin your business and that you cared about the views you were getting how much money you were making out of it yet you're going to say that you didn't care about any of that again you're just retconning your own past experiences creating more of fake histories i fuck around with my commentary because i don't care about the repercussions of what i say i think the whole thing's a joke anyway uh-huh you thought the whole thing was a joke anyway but yet every single time that someone would say something about you you would immediately go oh they're just a bunch of jealous losers little loser bitches that are just jealous of my success and then the this i don't play has happened and immediately you want evil aj to go straight into a fucking mental ward today i'm in my 40s i'm happily married i have a, a wife and a life this is my full-time job it's my occupation i take it way more seriously no, Phil, you want to say that you're happily married, but yet you're deluding yourself into believing that you are. And you're saying that you have a life? No, you fucking don't. You stay in your own house. You go out once a week just to try to get some, like, relevancy with social, like, aspects. But you don't have a life. You're just a hermit that stays in his house playing video games while holding up a cup demanding people to give you money. And as soon as you go out, I can just imagine that your fucking neighbors are peeking out the windows with the binoculars going, the Brunel is actually leaving the household for once. I don't want to get canceled on the internet for some bullshit because I need this as my job. Uh-huh, so you don't want to be canceled. How can you cancel a channel that's already dead? You know, I can't, I'm, this isn't really fucking around anymore. This is way more serious business. People tell me all the time that... Also, another thing I like to point out, can't move the camera, moves the camera. They find what I do very meaningful. My commentary and the things that we talk about every day is very useful to them. And whether it's, you know, makes you feel good, puts a smile on your face, you get informed by the stuff we talk about here on the podcast or whatever it is. Okay, so yeah, Phil, you're absolutely right. That is very useful. Your whole commentary, the way you do your videos, it's very, very useful. It's like telling people a cautionary tale of, how not to treat your own audience and how not to stream. That's essentially what you're trying to tell us with this. And you just show it off fully well. Why do you think everyone wants to talk about you and how big of a joke that you are? I can't fuck around like I used to anymore. I'm not that dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm literally not that guy anymore. But now people are saying, well, why can't you just go back to how you were 15 years ago? Because you asked me to change. Uh-huh, so you've changed because people asked you to. Yet we can go over to DSP Throwbacks, and you're making all of these jokes that are very insensitive, very cringe, very much on the shock value side, if you want to think so, or very edgy. But yet you want to put up this disclaimer. It's like, okay, this is what I would say back in the past, trying to make this disclaimer. It's like, I don't do this anymore. But yet you still proceed to say these jokes. You're thinking that you're hiding yourself behind a disclaimer that you can't be touched. Like the entire movement of this is how you don't play was, wow, Phil is this very unprofessional, irreverent jerk. And he doesn't deserve success because of that. So I listened directly to 10 years of criticism to change myself for the better. No, you did not. You took the whole thing with the site don't play it as a way that they're damaging your reputation and that evil AJ or anybody that creates a site don't play should have the white coats come get them and throw them into a loony bin. You do that every single time. Or people that actually like watching that content. Back when you were swatted, you brought up the whole thing about this is how you don't play. It's the people that make them, the people that enjoy them, that you got almost got killed because of those people. Yet, you want to say that you listened to 10 years of criticism when in reality, you've never listened to criticism at all. Instead, you just nitpick of what you wanted to hear, what you wanted to see, and just disregard everything else that would be considered useful. And now the feedback I get is, go back to how you were? No. No. There's a whole new generation of people now who are like that. And they're out there making millions of dollars, which I never made back in the day. It wasn't even possible. There were no sponsorships and partnerships and paid product placements. All the things that they get didn't exist when I was doing that kind of content 15 years ago. So I was Uh-huh. You're going to say that it's 15 years ago, but yet again, Phil, you were partnered under the Machinima. You had Loot Crate. You had the Amazon affiliate links. You were giving games early. You had sponsorships and paid advertisements. But the way that you act and the way that you treat people, that's the reason why you don't have it anymore. And yet you want to blame it on everyone else for why you don't get this anymore. 
But now if everyone else gets it, oh, they're shills. That they're just paid marketing shills. And you're jealous of the amount of money that they're making when it's something that you could do, but you just choose not to, to try and make yourself look like the big man with morality. Doing it for the love of it, pretty much. You know, and I stumbled into doing it for a living. All right. Phil, you don't do this for the love of it. The only thing that you do it for is the money. Maybe the love of money, but not for the passion of gaming. Now he's just going to take a glob, glob, glob of his gin water because he thinks it's so refreshing. So that's what drives me nuts. Because here I am playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm loving the game. I'm taking my time with it. I'm doing all the meaningful content that I'm discovering in it. And a lot of the feedback I'm getting is, wow, this playthrough is boring because you're taking your time and doing side content. Because you're playing the game really boringly, Phil, and people are noticing it, calling you boring and not the game. Rush through all that content and get to the story. What? This is the second time, maybe the third, that he brought this point up. Talking in circles. This is just to be called the Talking in Circles show. So go back 15 years. Go back to the old Phil again. Like, what on earth? And you know what it is? It's like I've always said, okay? And I'll say it again because this is a very true statement from my experience in life. In life, things swing like a pendulum, okay? Imagine that there's this big pendulum swinging back and forth, back and forth. At one point, the pendulum swings all the way this way, and this is what everything is and what all everyone wants. And then over time, all of a sudden, the pendulum swings back because of gravity and goes this way, and now it's on this side, and everyone wants this. Two things. One, you only bring up the whole thing with the pendulum because that's how you sway every single time you sit in that chair. Number two, life isn't necessarily like a pendulum because it's not going to stay frozen in one spot and then go right back to the other one and stay frozen because at the end of it, it always goes right back into the middle where you have to restart everything to try to figure out what exactly you're doing wrong with it. But again, you want to use any analogy that doesn't really work out because it goes to the left, it goes to the right, but it all goes right back into the middle. If you would have said that it's like a spinner, sure, because you spin it and it's on one side, but if you spin it again, it's on the other side. That would have worked better, but no, he wants to talk about it like it's a pendulum because that's how he likes to waddle if he, every single time he goes up the fucking stairs. You know, when I started on YouTube, people wanted this. Then somewhere in the middle, it swung this way and people wanted this. Well, now that pendulum is swinging back. Well, it's too late. Unlike waves of life and generational entertainment and stuff, I've al I'm already an older dude. I'm changed and my business is different now. I can't go back to that. You could go back to it, Phil, but the problem is, is that you lack the subtlety to actually make the jokes or the commentary entertaining. And I'm just saying that very, very generously here because every single time you would make all these jokes, there's no subtlety. There's no precision to how the jokes would stick. Instead, it's always the same cringy jokes that you thought would be funny when it wasn't. And now that you've gotten older, you think that scat jokes are funny, that they're sticking to the wall, when in reality, they're just there and it's annoying. So it is what it is, but I, it is, it's frustrating to me because I really like Final Fantasy. By the way, to give you some perspective here, yeah, the playthrough's not doing well at all. Oh, Jesus Christ, Phil. God damn it. You know muting your mic's a thing, right? You could set something up into your interface or just something in OBS where you could just mute the noises because you've done this already. You always can mute yourself, but every single time you make a disgusting noises, immediately you're just gonna like let it rip. And it's just really annoying. And now you're gonna say that, oh, support is low. Uh, Phil, what about the second stream that you had of Final Fantasy where people gave you a shitload of money and you decided to wear that fucking wig that made you look like any warthog? If you or a loved one have suffered from DSP's noises, please call 1-800-555-1651. Remember, we are there for you. Um, in regards to like everything I'm doing, the Final Fantasy VII videos so far, we're three days in, haven't even done as well as the Silent Hill, the short message playthrough from a few weeks ago. And that was a three hour throwaway experience that really was not very good. I just love the fact that when he's doing that shit, that all of a sudden his eyes started to twitch. Like, Phil, you want to say this whole thing about how uh, Silent Hill, the short message that came out a few weeks ago, is doing better. The reason why that's doing better, because that's a short game and everyone was talking about it. A good way to make views off of it. Plus, I'm going to say this, you played it for one stream and then dropped it. So no shit, it's going to do well because it's a game that everyone was talking about at that time. And it got a lot of criticism for it for being either eh or very terrible. And you just 
got it right in there and hit the algorithm. But you don't tend to understand that quite a bit. And that has gotten more views and attention on it than my Final Fantasy VII Rebirth playthrough so far. So I'm sorry because a lot of people like to make excuses, right? And they say, well, it's you. It's you and your commentary. Is it really? It is you, Phil. It is you. It is your commentary, and it's the way that you play the game. And yet, you're going to say that it's the game's fault. That it's Square Enix's fault. That it's the detractor's fault. That's the audience's fault. Because you don't want to take accountability for the reason why you're failing. What am I doing wrong in my commentary? What am I doing wrong in the game? Do you want me to rush through and skip all the content? Then the playthrough sucks. But if I do all the side content, then the playthrough's boring. It sucks. So you're putting the blame onto the audience yet again, and you're trying to tell them or demand them to tell you what you're doing wrong, when rally, you could go back and watch your fucking content to figure out what you did wrong with it. But you don't want to do that. Instead, blame the audience for it. But, Phil, the only way that you can make this interesting or better for you is if you actually interact with your audience. Stop interacting with them when you're getting money or you're banning somebody. Talk with your audience. Have conversations with them. Ask questions. Look over at your chat. Read the questions. Read the responses. And then do it as you play. I mean, for God's sakes, Phil, streaming slash Let's Plays have changed for a good reason. Whether for the better or for the worse, depends on the creator themselves. I'm talking with my audience, we're having conversation, so what did I do wrong there? You aren't really having conversations with the audience, Phil. Instead, you're just staring at the TV, barely saying a word, act, act, acting at something that's not even funny, or just look at your chat, hoping that people give you tips, and immediately going right back to the game, and not even bothering to interact with them ever again. No, here's the truth. Because as much as people want to always pin it on me, the truth is it's not the case. There's tons of stuff that I'm doing that people like. That people like what? What are you doing that people are liking, Phil? People are actually turning out and watching and enjoying. The problem is, it's not RPG playthroughs. The RPG playthroughs are played out because there's too many fucking RPGs at once. I love the fact that he said that, oh yeah, I've done a lot of things that people are liking, but yet he refused slash didn't even think of any reasons or explanations to what he's doing that's good. Instead, he's blaming it on RPGs, and he's blaming it on the game, and he's blaming it on the RPG releases. When in reality, if you go and check all the RPGs that are coming out, some of them aren't really AAA releases. Some of them are just ports of old games that are coming out for a modern era. And then some of them are probably AAA releases. But again, he's only focusing on the AAA ones. And then he wants to make the excuse of, oh, there's too many RPGs. I can't keep in contact with them. Or he'll just say that one game isn't an RPG when it's already categorized as an RPG. Also, gotta love that contradiction where he says that it's not the RPG playthroughs at fault, but yet goes on to blame the RPG playthroughs because there's multiple ones at once. This is just because he doesn't want to take accountability that the reason why his content sucks is because of him, but he wants to go ahead and blame something else while he's trying to defend at the same time. They all came out within this three plus month span. Keep in mind, it started in December with Baldur's Gate 3. And I figured December and January were the perfect time <clears throat> to play Baldur's Gate 3. Phil, the reason why you played it was because you wanted to prove that the tractor's wrong after you said a whole bunch of shit about how it's not going to win Game of the Year and that PC games or PC-centric games have no contention to be Game of the Year. But yet, that's when you threw the ultimatum, give me money or the game sucks. Hold my hand or Larian Studios gets the axe. Because there was nothing going on. But then what happened? RPG, 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 RPG. There's too many fucking RPGs at once. Right? Uh-huh. Going back to blaming the RPG releases. When in reality, Phil, if you could actually... Oh, I don't know. Focus on one game and then go into the other one. Maybe, just maybe, you could have some attention coming to you, but you don't do so. By the way that you play, that the way you have your schedule, and just the way that you interact with your audience, that's the main reason why people are saying that it's you. And what's the problem with RPGs is that even though you can argue that RPGs are very different in the way that they execute, they're all very similar, okay? What do RPGs have? Usually loads of characters with different backstories, loads of elaboration on that backstory, loads of combat, whether it's action-based or turn-based, there's still loads of it and it's very repetitive and takes up time. Loads of world exploration with little minutia when it comes to things going on in the world. Loads of side questing. Loads of collecting. Loads of leveling. Loads of menus. Loads of dialogue. Loads. Too many fucking loads. Jesus fucking Christ, Phil. T tone it the fuck down just a tiny bit. 
with his explanation when it comes to dialogue, dude. You want to keep saying that all the RPGs are the same, but yet you forget that all RPGs have a different subgenre. You have action, you have turn base, you have strategy, you have computer, aka Baldur's Gate 3 and Disco Elysium or Diablo. You have all the different genres when it comes to this type of gameplay. But yet, you're wanting to make up the excuse that all RPGs play the fucking same. Okay, then this is a whole thing. Ty taking the Tales of series and compare it with the Persona series. You fucking can't really do that, Phil. It all just feels samey when you're, even if you're playing these different universes and different styles of RPG, it's just the same shit over and over. Keep this all in mind. This is the guy that is telling everybody, no, 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 painting himself as the man that loves RPGs. And what has he been doing for the past few days? Complaining about RPGs. <laughs> it really does. And that's the thing. I'm playing... Baldur's Gate 3 feels different from Like a Dragon, feels different from Final Fantasy 7, but at the end of the day, they're all RPGs. They're all kind of samey when it comes down to what you're doing in each of them. Not necessarily the same thing, Phil. One's a computer RPG, one's a turn-based RPG, and one's an action RPG. Again, they're all not the same. They're different in their own rights. So I get the fact that there's going to be massive burnout. And again, I wish that there was more stuff going on. But what's going on? A failure of a game in Suicide Squad. A co-op only game in Helldivers 2. We tried Power World. It worked for a few streams, but then it got boring. So I can only play what's available. I love the whole entire thing where he's just repeating the same games for the past few fucking days slash weeks. He's been saying the same thing about Suicide Squad, Hell Divers, and Pal World. With Pal World, the reason why you stopped playing it is because nobody cared about it anymore. They didn't stop giving you money for it. So immediately you came to the conclusion that, oh yeah, we're bored of it, even though you were bored of it. Suicide Squad, you wanted to play it, but refused to. And then Hell Divers, well, quite obvious, you don't have any friends to actually team up with and just go hell diving for democracy for Super Earth. And then there's other games that came out. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, a good game that came out from Ubisoft. Now, you don't want to play that because, in your words, my audience doesn't like Metroidvania. Persona 3 Reload, you don't want to play that because it's an RPG, and also, you fucking hate Atlas with a passion. Skull and Bones, something that you can play with your wife and actually say, oh, hey, this game is terrible. Here's our experiences with it. Nope, just did it off screen, one and done, not touching it ever again. But yet, you want to talk about doing things with co-op with Cat, but yet, you've kind of stopped talking about it after a few weeks. So what's funny about what I'm saying right now, okay, is that when you compare, for example, what we're doing on DSP Gaming to what we're actually doing on my other channel, the Throwback channel, which we're going to talk in a little bit. Uh-huh. One that you're reacting to your old content, or DSP Reacts, where you're reacting to content and failing at it and DSP Gaming, where you're playing video games, but you have no passion for it. Either you play it very boringly, or you get really salty when the game doesn't go your way. Because on that channel, all I'm doing is watching and reacting to my old content, and that channel's doing well. Now, views-wise, is it sky high? No. Uh-huh. It's doing really well because someone gave you $300 worth of Super Chat. Plus, the other thing, which is that you didn't want to do the daily uploads. You started doing daily uploads. You didn't want to put memberships on it. Started putting memberships on it. And you didn't want to stream constantly on it. And yet, you're streaming constantly on it because you're deluding yourself into believing that people liked your old content. When in reality, no one really did. But actually, we're getting people engaged and supportive and excited for the content on the Throwback channel more than the new game we play right now. Seriously. Seriously. Look, my old stuff is better while I'm making up excuses to why I can't say certain things now, but I could back in the day. And I'm just going to laugh at my old jokes because it's a bygone era. I don't do that anymore. Like, it's actually hard for me to retain any viewership on these all these hundred RPGs, you know? Even though, looking at how many RPGs are being released in the beginning of the year, it's about maybe 30. Most of them are just re-releases. And, and you know what? My Ruin just made a great point. He says, the same is going to happen with Dragon's Dogma 2. People are going to be mad at you if you skip it because there's too many RPGs, but then people will be upset with you if you skip it because you skipped the new game. Correct. 
Phil, you already made it crystal clear that you're not playing Dragon's Dogma 2 just because of the amount of RPGs that came out, making up excuses, sowing the seeds of your own downfall yet again, and yet you want to make up the excuse that if you don't play it, people are going to be upset with you, and if you do play it, people will be upset with you. Constantly make up the same excuses over and over and over, and you're hoping for a different result. I'm basically in this impossible situation where because too many of the same style of game have come out now in a three-month span, if I play the new ones, no one cares, they're boring, it's the same kind of game. Well, oh, Phil, that's just the way that you play them, not because of the game. If I skip it, how dare you skip it? Don't you understand it's a new game and everyone wants it? Like, what? Uh, Phil, there are plenty of games that you've skipped and nobody fucking cared. But now you make up the excuse that, oh, if I skip it, people will be mad at me. Even though nobody cared if you skipped it or not. What? You just can't win. Like, people were, were very pumped and excited for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. No one really was caring for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The only reason why they were quote-unquote pumped up and excited was because you were feigning interest and feigning anticipation of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth being a good game for you to play and to save your channel. That's the only reason why, because in people in your audience could take your very word and they believe it to be gospel by the way that you presented it. Even though, granted, most people that want, like see you, they don't think the same way but since the people in your audience are just the ones that have to rely on disabilities checks and they give them to you that's your audience that you're wanting and also the people that constantly spam your chat or say racist shit the feedback i'm getting now is most people are not attending the live streams because they're playing it themselves <clears throat> uh-huh that's one and also their disability checks didn't come in so they didn't give you money except for that second stream and they're gonna watch the videos on demand after the fact which i appreciate no, you don't, because you're complaining that you're not getting enough views off of it. But, I, you know, I'm a live streamer. <laughs> I don't play stuff off camera. You don't play games off stream anymore just because you don't find any passion with video games. You can look at many people that play video games on stream, and yet when they're off stream, they're still playing video games because it's a passion for them. It's a hobby that they enjoy. Video games now are not a hobby for you. Instead, they are... A business a really shitty business that you want to say that this is for money that you're trying to provide content for people by you playing video games but when people ask you why don't you play them off stream you wanted to make up that stupid fucking analogy about oh let's just say that you're a mechanic and you go to your job and then you come home are you working on cars then you don't have that passion like everyone else does and it shows that's gonna I'm gonna have to stream the game what are you what do I do with the streams if half the people aren't attending the streams right you know, I don't know, like, it really is a tough time right now when it comes to the gameplay. It is, like, I'm confused of what I'm supposed to be doing different when no one seems to have a solution, right? And the funny part is people keep saying, oh, no, it's not that it's too many RPGs. Then explain it. It's not the RPGs, Phil. It's not the game's fault. It's not the company's fault or the industry's fault. And it's not your audience's fault. It's your fault. And it's always going to be your fault because, again, the way that you present yourself and the way that you play video games, it's very boring. You're not entertaining. You can watch anyone else that plays video games and you can have some entertaining value out of it and they're interactive with their audience. If you would interact with your audience a lot more, people would start attending more. It's like, oh, hey, he's actually interacting with his audience for once and it's not about money. But that's never going to happen for you, Phil, because you're going to keep constantly bringing up low support money. You're going to bring up the fact that no one's attending because you pushed them away. And also the sub only mode channel is not doing you any fucking favors at all. But yet, you're going to say that this is successful and that everyone else that does their channels, they're failures. Really explain it, right? I'd love to hear your explanation for this because there is none. Uh-huh. You want to say that you want to hear someone's explanation, but then you want to say that there is none. If someone gives you an explanation for it, you're going to completely disregard it, call them morons, and you just refuse to hear any explanations given to you. The only time you'll ever take someone's explanation at their word is if they give you a shitload of money, which is always a constant with you. It's just there's too many fucking RPGs. It's not that people aren't interested, it's that they're not interested in the same thing 20 times in a row. Well, Phil, if you would just, oh, I don't know, spruce up your channel and actually provide more variety, maybe people could come back to your channel and actually watch you. But you don't provide any fucking variety. It's always the same game. To see you constantly make up 
the excuse that it's everyone else's fault but your own and that people that don't give you money they're to blame but yet you're gonna sit there hoping for an explanation and yet you're not gonna like it very much <laughs> anime slate now here's this is actually really hilarious i got this one i gotta call out because this one is actual bullshit okay this is from Anime Slayer, and he does a dollar tip. And I'm not going to take this out on Anime Slayer because I don't, I'm not angry that he said this. I, you know, we can address it. I think people don't like Final Fantasy VII, unfortunately, because you have a stigma to JRPGs. Every time you play one, you point out things about Japanese culture you dislike or you demean otaku culture. It's a turnoff. I can tell when the beach segment of Final Fantasy VII happens, you'll make fun of people for enjoying it. Well, Anime Slayer is not wrong with this, though. It doesn't matter if it's a JRPG or just any Japanese game entirely. He will constantly make fun of the Japanese culture. He'll just keep going on and on about how they're perverted, how they're lonely, how they're xenophobic. All the meanwhile, Phil's making all the racist stereotypes about Japanese culture. He does this quite often, but yet he's not bad at this person. Keep this in mind. So you listen to negative memes about me. Uh-huh, so you're not mad at the guy, but then immediately you go, Oh, you listen to the negative shit about me. Are you mad at him or are you not, Phil? And you actually judge a playthrough that just began on a negative meme that hasn't even happened in the playthrough yet. Phil, the whole thing with Costa del Sol already came out. They saw the swimsuits that Tifa and Aerith and Yuffie all wear. Everyone's seen it, Phil. And yet you're going to immediately go, oh, you're listening to the detractors again by the negative toxic memes about me for something that's not even happened yet. But it's going to happen. And I'm just going to call it right now. He's going to make it some sort of like perverted Japanese culture thing. That's what you're saying. You're literally saying, well, because Final Fantasy VII is going to have one beach scene out of a 60 plus hour playthrough and because of that one scene he may make a comment that this is kind of immature that this is in the game the entire playthrough sucks phil he never said that he said that anything that's japanese centric you'll constantly make a whole bunch of excuses or a whole bunch of points about the culture or just otakus in general while pointing yourself to be wrong in the process and yet people get turned off by that what the fuck is wrong with people like that no, really. I have to ask you this question. What is wrong with you? This is a 60-hour game with tons of gameplay elements, awesome narrative, great combat right now that I'm actually getting better at and learning. I learned something at the end of the last stream last night. That I was like, oh, that's interesting. You know, tons of content that I'm loving. Tons of content that you're loving, but yet every single time that you're not getting that support that you demand, all of a sudden, it's the game's fault. So, why is it that you're trying to feign interest while throughout the entirety of it, you're bitching and complaining that it was the game's fault that you're not getting money out of it? You way to flip-flop here. Absolutely loving the game. I told you. Actually, this is stacking up to be a great game. Maybe one of my Game of the Year picks, I'm thinking. Yeah, it's way too early to tell, Phil. And yet, this is the thing that you always tend to go on. Nobody cares about the January, February releases, but this one's in February, and yet you're all up on its dick but the playthrough sucks because there's going to be a beach scene where i'm going to make a comment that i don't like that everyone's in bikinis what the fuck are you talking about well then again though phil you just don't like anybody that looks quote unquote sexualized or just anyone that looks attractive you're going to see teeth and you're like why they put this in the game why couldn't they look like cloud really what the fuck just listen to what you just said <laughs> Why? Why do they have to listen to what they just said? They said something that was a factual observation, and you don't like it when someone points out that something that you've done. You don't like it, and immediately you want to call them an idiot for it. This is the Phil mentality. Every single time that he sees something or hears something about himself, which is true, and yet all of a sudden he tries to spin it that they're idiots for it. What, huh? That makes no sense whatsoever. No, it makes perfect sense, Phil, because you've done this. Listen, be immature. Say what you want. I don't have to participate in that kind of commentary or whatever. I don't. And that's fine. But I'm not going to say... Do you really think that when that scene comes up, we're just going to pause the playthrough and I'm going to go on a two-hour rant about how, how horrible it is that scene's in the game? No. No. Instead, you'll go clown mode. Like, oh my god, uh, 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 why they put this in the game? This is stupid. Why... Square Enix is stupid, Drew. Oh, it's a Japanese game. It's part of their culture. They like that kind of silly stuff. In fact... <laughs> Phil, you just...
pointed out the exact same thing he was mentioning right now. Because you have a stigma to JRPGs. Every time you play one, you point out things about Japanese culture you dislike or you demean otaku culture. You just said, oh, it's a Japanese game, it's a cold. You just proved that fucker's point right. Did you not realize that? What a lot of people don't realize about this, and when they have scenes with like, oh, there's risque clothing or a sexual reference, they actually find that comedic. Phil, a lot of games out there can have that. They have that sexual tone with the game. They have it. It's not because it's comedic in tone from the Japanese. You're misconstruing everything that's in the game. God damn it, Phil. You just... <laughs> Oh, oh my god. Oh, Phil, Phil just astounds me. Every single time that he's like, no, you're wrong. And he immediately pours rooms of right. God damn it, Phil. What's wrong with you? They don't find that like, oh, it's perverted. They think of it as comedy. Like, mm, depends on who you're asking with that, Phil. There are a lot of people that like the fan service when it comes to anime, Japanese game, or just JRPGs, or just anything that informs, like, involves anything for the Western, like, games. It does not matter. God damn it. You make me so upset that I'm almost stuttering my words. God damn it, Phil. Sexual content is part of Japanese comedy, correct? How do you know this for sure, Phil? Did you do any research on this? No? You're going by stereotypes again? Okay. They'll have that in there to get a laugh. So, that scene to Jap Japanese people is funny. <laughs> uh-huh, and then look at the people that actually watch anime that actually see all this and they find it comedic in tone. You like to criticize people for looking at that stuff and you immediately want to call them losers for it. <laughs> Again, Phil, you're just wanting to say that they're losers, but yet you're trying to bite your tongue on it. Ah, look, here's Barrett. He's going to be in a sailor suit and Cloud in, in a, you know, skimpy Speedo underwear and the girls in bikinis. Ha-ha. Wait, 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 Phil. Why is it that you're so obsessed with what they look like? And then why say that Cloud's gonna wear Speedo? Did you not see the screenshot where Cloud's actually wearing a swimsuit? God damn it, Phil. This just proves that you are still in the closet and you're about to come out of it. Also, hi, me from the future when I was editing this. There was one thing that Phil does not seem to mention is that this has become a trope. In forms of Japanese media, there's always going to be the beach episode where it's just going to be filled with fan service, maybe some comedic tone, but it's mostly made for fan service. But yet Phil doesn't seem to understand it at all, but he wants to keep going on and on and on about how sexualized content is always going to be part of Japanese comedy when he did no research into Japanese comedy at all. It's uncomfortable, but it's funny, right? They get a laugh out of it. But they don't perv over it, but people do. And then they think, oh, you see, well, if you don't like that, you hate it. What are you talking about? I like, just because I, I, I might not want to partake in a scene like that, because I'm 40-some years old, and I'm happily married, and I don't look for that in video games because I'm past that point in my life. Phil, that whole entire thing about you being married and being old, that does not fucking matter. There are people who are in relationships or married that could still look at that and still have fantasies over it. You know, fictional crushes, the waifus, the husbandos, the celebrity crushes. Because people can have that, and it's completely fucking normal. But you want to look at all these people that have these things, and you want to call them abnormal, call them freaks, just because they have this. <laughs> Again, Phil, you want to keep deluding yourself to believing that you're happily married, that you p look all past this. I think the main reason why you're saying this is because if Cat saw you play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and you got to that scene, and you made one compliment to the character design of Tifa with her frilly bikini... All of a sudden, your dick will be handed to you in a box by cat. Doesn't mean the playthrough sucks. It's literally one scene. It's gonna last, what, two minutes? No, the playthrough already sucks, though, because that way that you play and just the way that you interact with the audience of the game. Because you focus more on the game, in quotes, focus, and you barely pay attention to your chat. But yet you want to make up excuses saying that if you pay attention to your chat, it takes away from the immersion of the game. But yet, you want to call yourself an interactive streamer. Out of a 60-hour playthrough, the fact that you even said that in the tip is remarkable. I mean, <laughs> wow. Anyone who has that mindset, you got to reevaluate yourself. Why do they have to reevaluate themselves? Because, what, they said something that was true about you? Because you tend to do this, and you just prove his point by saying that it's a Japanese game and it's their culture. You just proved that to him. If you think that someone's played through a video game sucks because there was one optional silly joke scene added in by the Japanese game devs and a person may... It didn't even happen yet. 
the person may say something like, oh, this is silly. Why is this in there? Like, what are you talking about? And yet you're already thinking that that's what you're going to do when it happens. But knowing you, you're going to go full clown mode. I'm just hoping for that to happen. Is this really how everyone on the internet is in 2024? I mean, that's ridiculous. What an insane statement. <laughs> What an insane statement for someone to point out exactly what I do every single time I play a game that comes from a Japanese company. Yeah, how dare that person. Arthur has tipped me a dollar and 23 and says, I love the beard and attire. You look like you're very comfy today. Oh no, this whole attire, it does not make it look comfy. It makes me like an old grandma. And fuck you, Arthur. I'm so glad that PBS decided to cut an end to your show. The amount of excuses that DSP could come up with truly astounds me. While I keep denying that it's not him that is boring, that the game, the game devs, the industry, or the audience are at fault for the reason why it's not doing so well, it really shows the amount of delusions and cope that this man truly has for why he's failing. But yet he wants to keep going on and on and on and on and on, feigning interest in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but when you see him play the game, he's not really enjoying himself, but yet he wants to tell y'all that he is. Because the delusion of grandeur will always seep in and it will just show more and more with his podcasts. But yet when someone actually does tell him that it's not RPGs, he wants to call that person an idiot, calling him wrong, and that every single time that it's something with the Japanese or anything that's Japanese centric, it's their culture, he wanted to deny that it wasn't that, but he proved that commenter's point across. It's really baffling to actually see that come into full fruition. It's like, Phil, don't say that you don't do it and then contradict yourself a few moments later because it just makes you look like a fucking hypocrite. It always tends to do. But with that said and done, I'm gonna move on with a Phil prayer. Deliver us from the dents, deliver us from the pay pigs, deliver us from the pig gnosis. May we never become dented. May we never become a beggar like Dark Side Phil. Just for the love of fucking God. It's not the game's fault for the reason why Phil is boring. It is always going to be Phil. And that point is going to be constantly repeated until it hits him to the grave. But thank y'all so much for watching this video. Have a good rest of y'all's day, rest of y'all's night. Keep it really beautiful, people. I'll see y'all in the next one.